Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm gonna show you how to create stories that sell on a sales call and as well when you are having conversations with prospects because stories can potentially help you out. And in this quick video I'm just gonna share with you it briefly and in my future videos I will go way more in depth but I already wanted to create it because it can potentially massively help you out. And to show you some proof what we do right now, we run a high ticket coaching company for fitness, like uh, oriented on fitness, that's how I meant it. You probably have already seen all of these results from my past videos and yeah, I run it with my business partner Dominic and what we do is that we get people started all day long. So I'm not selling you any business courses on the back end, so no need to worry. <laughs> but yeah, how to create stories that sell. And when hearing stories, we tend to place ourselves in the person. And if we are watching, for example, Avengers or Thor, then we picture ourselves as the Thor. So when we hear stories, we tend to become introspective and we ask ourselves questions. And it's in those questions that we convince ourselves to move forward or do something. And we ask ourselves, what do, would I do if I were the protagonist, like the person who is sharing the story? And if the prospect can relate with the story or analogy, then they become introspective and they ask themselves questions that make them convince themselves. We can't convince people to do specific things. We can only get them to convince themselves. And that's why sharing genuine and real stories is massively powerful. And one thing is to sharing stories on the objections they may have or on the limiting beliefs they may have. And another thing is to actually share your own story because to give you an idea, let me scroll a little bit more. Here are just some of my pictures. In the past, I had a full face of acne. I was chubby, overweight. This was me posing the first time. <laughs> like it's a terrible picture, but I, I had to put it here. And as you can see, I went through some, uh, yeah, funny stuff, I would say. But mainly the main reason I got into entrepreneurship because my mom was diagnosed with cancer cells and we also had to move out of our old house because we would get otherwise kicked out. And yeah, again, like I didn't went fully in my past right now in my story about like what I went through. And as an example, in 2023 to 24, when I was 18, I moved to this penthouse overlooking the whole city. I was featured on a magazine. Then I'm as well one of 20 or 25, I'm not exactly sure, success graduates from the program Junior Achievement here in Slovakia. It's a business program. And in 31, 32 years, because this year as well, they had around maybe half a million people go through it. And I'm one of their successful graduates. I speak in front of 200 people, I was in TV, I was in all these articles and you can see the difference between the point A and point B and again, I just shared it in a couple of seconds. So you probably connected with me way more than before you didn't know these things that why I got into entrepreneurship etc to help my mom and all the other things. So that's why your personal story is massive. So if you can share that and prospects can understand that and know your own story, then it can massively help you out and get potentially more high ticket coaching clients. And then there is the second point of helping them solve or break the limiting beliefs they have. And first you need to understand what concept you are trying to convey. You want the person to really place themselves into the protagonist and you want that person to ask themselves, what would they have done in that situation? So you need to have a framework on which you want them to buy into. And there are like sales questions. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Or spouse, do you think it's going to work? And do you think it's the best thing for us in our future? How much longer do you want to stay stuck? What's the worst thing that can happen? And everyone had struggles. Let me actually zoom in maybe a little bit more. Everyone had struggles. Everyone had to make a difficult choice. And it's about being able to make the difficult choice and being able to identify something within yourself that's holding you back. And then you overcome that through decision making, through taking actions and not through sitting there and thinking about it. And as an example, you can picture yourself on a big island that's surrounded by water. It has trees, mountains, etc. And that's all you can see. You can mainly this person is just looking around. Oh, he just sees the water. 
and every decision that the person on the island makes is based on that fact that you are on an island surrounded by water with limited resources which is fair and it makes sense because people make decisions based on their perspective but the problem is that you have to start making decisions based on the perspective that you want to have otherwise this is the only thing you are ever going to see and you need to get the input of someone who is let's say on the top of the mountain and you need to be able to see everything but right now you are in a position where you can barely see and you just need to decide i've got the way up the mountain but again you have to decide if you want to keep staying on that island or if you finally want to see and change your life forever or to give you another perspective there is a saying that you have to become a Lambo first before you get it. Because what would a person, for example, right now you are making $40,000 a month. What would a version of you that's making $100,000 do in your situation? That's one perspective. And second perspective is to actually become that person. How would he act? And as I said earlier, become the Lamborghini first. So you are not like other people who are uh, who never had Lambo, but when they sit in it, they don't feel comfortable. Not that they don't feel comfortable, but they feel anxiety. They are scared to drive. They maybe forgot how to actually drive. So, yeah, and some frameworks for you when it comes to sales call. Bad bad debt versus good debt. If it helps you in the long run, it can be worth taking the on the debt. I tried everything. I exhausted my capacity to be able to fix the problem or this problem with the current skills and knowledge. Everyone has access to money when needed. Getting a greens and buying throughout the story that these things are all fact. If I was selling you a lottery ticket for $1 million, it was guaranteed for you to win $10 million. Even though you don't have right now the $1 million, and I say to you the time frame that I'm selling this only to you in this week, seven days, you would do probably every single thing you can to get that million dollars because the 10 million is guaranteed. That's why the money objection doesn't exist. Because, again, if the lottery ticket or if I was selling you a brand new Lamborghini, brand new, all everything is fine with it, for $20,000 and you know it's worth 300 k you know you can resell it easily for the 300 k but you have right now $10 in your bank account you do every single thing you can to get a 20 k because you see the value in it and if you can also get these agreements that they would agree with it f f on the sales call firstly when you make this example and then when you get to the price if they don't see the value then they are going to push back so you really need to uncover what's behind the hesitation that they have and how you can also increase the value of your service to make it seem like the lambo or the lottery ticket guidance is the key the whole point of getting someone to buy our service is because we become a trusted advisor someone who is ahead of the prospect that they can trust to take them to the promised land planting the seed of going to a trusted advisor and asking them how to make a decision you can never know that something is going to work until you do it it's going to take out some hesitation especially when the prospect starts thinking but how do i know if it's going to work of course you can show case studies clients if you have guarantees contract show but mainly Yes, you can show all of these things, but the best thing to say, you don't. All you can do is put yourself into the best position to be able to achieve success. And you try to get buy-in on that. Because nothing in, life in is, nothing in life is guaranteed. But it's up to you to make a decision and to put yourself to the best position to get to your goal. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Because if the answer is you would do it, why would you put yourself in a position when you are banking on failing? Then, I didn't ask my wife or business partner. Explain the process of how you overcame that. An example, where you or a client had to deal with something similar. And uh, you can watch my other video on objection handling where I explain this, how to handle these objections. But in short, it's that, okay, oh, I need to talk to my wife. Cool, blah, 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 you say something. But it's mainly about and what if she says no what are you going to do 
and the person realizes that they are going to be stuck in the hamster wheel because they are not going to do anything about it and if they keep doing what they are doing it's going to get them the same results it's been already getting them which is being stuck and last point deep dive into taking action explaining how i got my business partner to take action then all of a sudden they put themselves into the seat of themselves and the business partner at the same time so yeah if you can come up if you think of all the objections that you potentially get on your sales calls or with conversations with prospects and you can think about some stories that you could say on those specific things and also how you overcame them with us we invested over thirty thousand dollars if not more into coaching programs like one was 12k another one was i think 9k right now we started working with a person that's charging 21k in total for four months and at first when i was a beginner and we have blah blah blah, blah all the other things around that i had limiting beliefs I didn't want to buy. I can't imagine myself from two years ago buying the programs that I bought. But right now, I'm just making a logical solution. It can help me. Let's go. And before, again, I can now come up with stories that I told me to help me overcome that limiting belief. And you can convey to the to the prospect. But main point is if you can as well share your own story, not only on the sales call, of course you can relate to them but if you can have if you are a business owner of course if you are a sales rep then they only get to know you on the sales call but if you are a business owner coach agency owner growth operator doesn't matter if you can have your story on youtube or on your instagram the way people are connect, going to connect with you is just something absolutely insane and people buy from people they like know and trust so yeah provide people value share your own story and i hope this quick video was helpful and i will see you in the next one goodbye